Some food for thought as New York picked its casino locations yesterday, including one in the Caskills and none in Orange County. Is the gaming market already working against the new casino before it even breaks ground? Now, everybody knows about the hard times for casinos in Atlantic City. We've covered it ad nauseum in this program. The Showboat, The Revel, Trump, Atlantic Club, they all shut their doors. Taj Mahal, they're on the brink of also shutting down. The city ended 2013 with 12 casinos. At the end of this year, it's going to have eight or seven if the Taj, in fact, um, goes south. Now, it's not just AC. The two casinos in Connecticut, they've laid off a lot of workers. They've ended tribal dividends. That, as the market share, constricts. And then there could be new pressures on New York's new casinos. New Jersey actively looking at potentially building a casino in the Meadowlands or Jersey City and flirting with adding sports betting as well. And, I, and I'm not even getting, Tim, into what happened on Election Day in Massachusetts. you got casinos in Pennsylvania already, including on the eastern <laughs> part that would theoretically compete with some of the same uh, customers uh, for the Catskills Casino. I even listened to Kevin Law when he was giving his rationales for why he said one plus one doesn't even equal one in certain scenarios, and they right. downgraded the revenue projections for when they started the process to yesterday at the announcement. How tough is it to fight for that dollar, um, forget about 30 years ago, from even five years ago? It's, uh, you know, it's a very competitive field. And, uh, you know, this year, even without new competition, new, new capacity coming online in this area, our business is down 6% because it's a very economically yep. driven uh, field as well. I mean, it's people's, you know, free cash, disposable cash, and there's not as much of it these days as there used to be. So you couple that with the additional casinos that are, have come online in years past. Uh, we're one of them, obviously. Um, and then you look at, you know, what's out there in the future, it's, it's, but it's did, a zero-sum game, so you're sort of just moving But then explain this the to me. Um, you, people don't have to look too far. They look at Atlantic City, and yet they're lining up to submit bids here, uh, including with non-refundable bids. Um, why is there such demand when it's so hard and such a tight margin to make money with so much competition with the same dollar? There's, uh, there's really not that many areas left in the country where there's you know, a, uh, a lack of casinos, and New York's probably one of the best of the remaining areas, so. But you, when you figure out the economic model, though, it's changing, as, as Dick points out, and it goes back to something Gary said a couple of years ago. I have notes as to you do what you notes. said. <laughs> I keep notes. But New York has been exporting gambling dollars. And the, because it's big and rich, the opening of casinos in this area doesn't mean that we're going to attract new business. It means we're going to attract business that somebody else has that's going to stay because it's closer. Can I interject? I agree with you, 100%. Oh and I've taken, personal cre I've taken personal credit for the demise of New Jersey. Uh, what, <laughs> <laughs> what had happened... The Grim Reaper here. Yeah. Oh. Pri 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 prior to Yonkers opening, we had 70 buses leaving Westchester County every single day going to Atlantic City. 7-0. Today we have zero. Casinos, all casinos, make their money on slot machines. They don't make their money on poker. They don't make their money on roulette. They make their money on slot machines. The 70, bus, the 70 buses contain slot players, all slot players. People would say, why would I get in a bus for two hours and go to Atlantic City when I can go to Yonkers? Well, there's so no what's, question about So what's that. happening now, those dollars that you said we were exporting, and we were exporting, are now staying in New York. And the same holds true for Connecticut. Okay, but Gary, that then begs the question for me. They did the math and they said, well, we're not going to do four, let's do three. And we're not going to do it in these places because we're worried about cannibalization for the same dollar. Seven years from now, now a lot can change in seven years, but you potentially could have a self-cannibalization in New York where you're going to be building casinos in New York City, and then poor Tim here is going to be, you know, saying... Gary, you guys are killing no, me no, here. No, so first of all, mm -hmm. don't do poor Tim. <laughs> Tim will do fine, thank you. But, but no, but you get Tim my is going to be knocking on the yeah. door you for, done four, you for did a full three. casino. Right. They did the, they did the revenue time. projections. They were even less than they thought. And now all of a sudden, on the docket, as part of the consideration for the decision yesterday, was potentially casinos in the southern part of the state, specifically in the five boroughs. Is there, is it a drug Basically, these, I mean, they figured out the model with racinos right now, but everybody wants to go back to the casino model that doesn't necessarily work everywhere. Uh, are we worried that we're going to repeat some of the same mistakes that Jersey did? Well, first of all, there's no guarantee 
that there will be casinos in seven years. There's just, just like there's no guarantee there would have been four casinos this year. Yep. Um, there's the potential. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, based on the economics at the time, and none of us can predict what's going to be happening in seven, seven years. Um, I don't think that there will be a casino in New York City. Um, if there were, everybody's out of business. I mean, if there were a casino in New York City right now, it would be the most lucrative casino in the entire world. But that's but the fight. That's the fight you're going to get in four years, and it's going to be up to the governor. Look, if you want four sites, you get one at Belmont, one at Aqueduct, one at Yonkers, and one in Manhattan. That's where it's headed. Now, there may be good reasons to worry about that, but that's where the four casino well, sightings are headed. As ahead. for the upstate casinos, including the one in the Catskills, the, the phrase that I kept hearing throughout this process was destination resort. That's what's supposed to delineate this from the model in Atlantic City or even the models in Connecticut or in Foxwoods. Golf courses, ski slopes, water parks, all of the extra stuff that would make it a tourist attraction even if there wasn't the gambling there. That's the hook that the, and the, the argument that I kept hearing why it would be successful. There's a, a downside to it also. The cost of building that destination resort in the Catskill is a billion dollars. That's a lot of debt or a lot of money that has to Let be me paid ask off, you, Andrew, which when means you the profit there, margin has to be that much higher every month. Andrew, you, you were on the ground for a while. You talked to not just the principals, but also the people in the yeah. area. You saw the boarded up shops. Did your opinion change? I know many years ago, they've been talking about this for 15 years, longer than that about longer, casinos. Longer than and that. my thing to people was, hey, you go up there. I dare you to walk through some of these Sullivan counties and tell me what's the alternative. This may not be perfect, but be, until somebody gave me a better solution, I said, I'll take a chance on this. Did you walk away with the same thought? Yeah, I mean, you walk through Thompson and Liberty in Sullivan County or Ellenville in Ulster County or Newburgh in Orange County, they need something. They clearly need something. Their, their leading industries seem to be healthcare, you know, uh, corrections and um, consignment shops, which really gives you an idea of how depressed the area is. There was also a compelling argument from Southern Orange, which is we're going to be so big and generate so much money that we're going to be able to hire people from Sullivan County, hire people from, from Ulster County. Is it your view that casinos have been economic beneficiaries of places like Atlantic City? No, absolutely then not. Why is there any reason to think they're going to do that for Sullivan County or uh, anywhere else? Well, there's What's the evidence? Well, the, the evidence is, is Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I, I went to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I saw the sands there, and I saw what looked like the rebuilding of Bethlehem, which was a steel town that had really seen dark days in the 70s and 80s. And it's doing much, much better than I expected it would. I can't tell you if it's directly related to the opening of a casino there, but it's certainly part mm. of it. It, it depends on what you do with the money. Um, New Jersey, when they originally built the casinos in, in 1974, the promise was that the money would go to make Atlantic City a better place. That didn't happen. They never spent a dime north, or actually west, yeah. of, the, of the boardwalk. What they did was they put the money into the New Jersey Sports and Exhibition Authority, who then used that money to give tax incentives and tax breaks to New York businesses. Baseball teams and football teams. No, but basically teams. New York businesses. Yeah. And if you remember driving down the West Side Highway, looking at Jersey City when it was just a rat trap, and now Jersey City is a beautiful place with skyscrapers where they've cannibalized New York businesses using the money that was generated. You're cheering yeah, me up. I, wait, wait, hold on one second, guys, because I'm up against it on the break, but I want to, <coughs> you're in the center of this. Are you optimistic um, two, five years from now that people are going to figure out not only the models that work, but that you guys can work together here, that you're not at cross purposes? I hope so. I mean, I think we, I think our site has got a lot of natural advantages to it, and, yep. uh, and we do expect to compete for and, and hopefully prevail on on one of those licenses. And um, but I mean, the the economics of this industry are shifting, you know, very quickly. So yep. uh, it's gonna it's gonna really take a lot of study and hopefully make the right bet in terms of. How, what the right size of investment is. Don't that. worry, Gary will be governor by then. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we're all set. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you all very much. Uh, Tim, Gary, I appreciate the time. Uh, you three troublemakers, stay with me, because when we come back, we're going to talk about another big economic decision for the state. Governor, he says no to fracking. It took him two years, but still, he made a decision, or at least the decision was made for him. It's a win for those who worried about the environment, but it also means certain parts of the state here economic opportunity went away as well. Did the state make the right choice? We'll get into that straight ahead.